is our fourth day of prayer during this process. And in the last three days, on Monday we had history, Tuesday we had association, yesterday we had pedagogy, and today the topic is on vocation. And so as we begin this morning, let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. So I'd like to start off with a scripture passage this morning from Ephesians. It goes like this. I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you, therefore, to lead a life worthy of the vocation to which you were called. With all humility and gentleness and with patience, support each other in love. Take every care to preserve the unity of the spirit by the peace that binds you together. There is one body, one spirit, just as one hope is the goal of your calling by God. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, over all, through all, and within all. On each one of us, God's favor has been bestowed in whatever way Christ allotted it. That is why it says, he went up to the heights, took captives, gave gifts to humanity. When it says he went up, it must mean that he had gone down to the deepest levels of the earth. The one who went down is none other than the one who went up above all the heavens to fill all things. And so to some, his gift was that they should be apostles, to some prophets, to some evangelists, to some pastors, and to some teachers, to knit God's holy people together for the work of service to build up the body of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I was preparing for this morning's prayer, I discovered that St. John the Baptist de La Salle recognized that teachers, educators, stand in a grace-filled relationship with their students. John the Baptist de La Salle regarded the school as a faith community and the teachers were the ministers of grace. It is there in these educators who exercise their vocation daily by instructing young people in the ways of the gospel, as well as in academics and in vocational subjects. And so as a little bit of an exercise, I invite you to think about your life maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, and what were your plans at that time? What did you see yourself doing in your future? And what did you hope to somehow become? And did you achieve your hope or are you doing something in your life that you never imagined? And so as I did that for myself, at this stage of my life, and after being a priest for 30 something years and a pastor for over 22, I find myself being a chaplain at a university. Never thought about that years ago, and here it is happening to me in my own life. I think questions like these encourage us to reflect upon the paths our lives have taken and find the hand and the heart of God in the midst of it all. By doing that, in that way, we become open to new callings that we might never have dreamed of answering. Now, as I look around, most of us have to work in order to make a living. And so we educate ourselves and get a job. And so there's a story about Amos, who is an Old Testament figure who really had two jobs at the same time. One was as a shepherd and the other was a dresser of sycamore trees. And while he was doing his jobs, he was called by God to become a prophet. Now being a prophet was not on his to-do list because he wanted nothing to do with prophets. In fact, he despised them. But nevertheless, by God's grace, Amos became a prophet. And as a result, his word continues even to today to challenge people to uphold God's justice and be defenders of the poor and the oppressed. For a while, Jesus had been a carpenter, and he was called to leave that safe life in order to call people to repentance and to belief. Jesus himself was so connected to God's call that he suffered rejection, torture, mockery, 
and in the end, gave up his own life. And during his public ministry, when Jesus started to call the 12 to become part of him, each one of those 12 already had their own means of livelihood. But at Jesus' invitation, each was willing to set aside their job and share in Jesus' vocation. His instructions to them were simple, to preach, to heal, and to confront evil. And so what has God called you to be in life? I think like the 12, we are to be his messengers in the world. We don't have to go to foreign lands, but I think what is necessary for us is certainly a shift in our way of thinking. So the question then becomes, what if you and I were to regard our job as a vocation, an activity where we are called by God to witness to truth and justice and goodness? What if we were to treat our own coworkers as gifts from God? And how might the work that you and I do become better, more careful, more generous? And if we had that kind of an attitude and we saw that kind of witnessing, maybe the frustrations and dissatisfactions that we all encounter periodically of our workday routines would then turn into peace and serenity. And how would that affect you? And how would that affect the people all around you? No matter what the job, by God's grace, it can be a vocation. You and I have been created by our God to do some definite service. I think God has certainly committed some work to you and I, which he has not committed to anyone else in life. You and I have our own mission. We are a link in a chain, a bond of connections between persons. God hasn't created you or me for nothing, but to do something remarkable. And so have you discovered God's purpose for you. And so in the end, I'd like to kind of offer this prayer on behalf of us all. God of mercy, you called every person into being and continue to call us to yourself through your son, Jesus Christ. You call each person in a special way from the very moment of existence to an unrepeatable vocation. It is our mission that only we can fulfill in order for us to share life with you. Lord, grant us the grace that we need to discover, embrace, and live out our own unique and personal vocation. And as we live out these vocations, grant us the grace to help each other live out their calling, so that way our world may be a place where all flourish according to their unique personal vocation in our world. And so when we doubt, increase our faith. When we become weary, strengthen us with hope. And when we fail to respond fully, have mercy, mercy on us and call us anew. So that filled with our desire for you, we may respond with all our mind, all our strength, and all our heart to your eternal love, that each one of us may become who we were meant to be, we always ask this through Jesus, your son. Amen. We live Jesus in our hearts forever. And may you have a great and profitable day in whatever way God calls you today. Amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So that's the little contribution I wanted to make on behalf of University Ministry. And to kind of share those words with you and even to kind of share them with myself and to do a little bit of thinking and reflecting, which is always good on a very warm and natural day. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Have a good day, everybody. Have a Thanks, good day. Father. Thank, Thank you. you. That was Thanks great. so much. Thanks, You're welcome. Father. Take care. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for joining.